Hey, Clint. Um, of course, you can't really do as much as you would want during OTAs, but just what have you been able to observe about the guys that have been in the building? Um, I think the, the most significant thing is that we've had everybody in the building, um, which is, I think, reflective of a level of enthusiasm and you know a focus on using you know, all the time that we have, whether it be you know, in the summertime, in the preseason, and during the course of the year games of practice to get better. I think that's that period that we just concluded is reflective of that. Aaron Lynn, Atlanta News first. How do you define success for Zachary in his first season of the NBA? You know, I, I think I define it for him the same way I would for our other guys. And really the trajectory of, of Zach's career, of uh, Trey's career, um, you know, it, it sounds a little counterintuitive because you have a veteran player, you know, Bogey's career, all of our, our younger guys as well, whether it be Dyson who's just with us. The thing that I would really want to see is, you know, just a consistent, continued improvement. And I think in order to achieve that, adversity is, is really required. It's a part of the growth process. And I think the thing that, you know, that I've seen from Zach is a young man that's got a really good feel for the game. Um, you can tell he has appreciation for, you know, for every facet of the game, really. And, I, and I've seen a work ethic. And I think you know, that work ethic is something you know, foundationally that, that we want to be you know, part of the identity of our program. So to see him come in with that, um, you know, and not to be afraid to fail, so to speak. I mean, any, for any rookie, you know, whether you're the first pick or the 10th pick or the 28th pick, you know, that's something I think is essential. Hey, Coach, I, I know it's way too early for, for lineup rotation type questions. But um, you're going to ask me anyway. Slight, <laughs> all right. When, just the fact that your front office trades away a star and starter, uh, for this team, how do you go about as the coach kind of managing that and, and determining those decisions of what you're going to do to replace a guy like that? Well, first, you know, wish DeJounte all the best and uh, what he gave to our program during the time he was here. The, the players, you know, the, the new players, you know, looking forward to seeing how they acclimate, um, you know, our draft picks. Um, draft pick, uh, seeing the improvement, not just in the first year players, but in second and third year players, and our veteran guys. I think sometimes we can feel like once you're a veteran, that's kind of where it stops. And I think, you know, those guys being focused on getting better. But when you have that, you have, you know, an opportunity for the group to collectively improve throughout the year. And I, I think that's there's something that's thematic for, for our team, it, it's really that, you know, and that can happen a number of ways, and that, that's something that you, you get excited about as a coach, you know, when you see enthusiasm from the players to make that happen, and make no mistake, that, that's a process, it, it doesn't happen overnight, and as I mentioned, even for an individual player to, you know, to get better through adversity, you know, and that doesn't mean Losing, although you know we all know there's no undefeated teams in the NBA, so that's part of it. You know how you handle winning and losing, but I think that you know that focus, of being able to you know bring bring focus and intentionality every day to your craft and not just to your own individual improvement, um, but to the group's improvement. I think I think that's part of an identity that I want to see us forge. Got a shiny toy, Zach. Um, just curious, what have you liked the most out of him so far? And what has what has he done off the court that, that you've been most impressed by? Well, we haven't seen a whole lot of not just Zach, but you know, Dyson. We saw Dyson in the Olympics. We've got a number of new players. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing them not just individually, but how they all kind of connect together and how they play together. Um, I think that'll be really, you know, really important. The, the thing that jumps out about Zach 
this really is working for me. You know, I think that combination of the hard work and being deliberate, you know, intelligent work is something that, that bodes well for any young player you know, as, as they progress in this league and um, they begin to find themselves, you know, in their, their individual path. And that's something that I think he's focused on. Um, you know, he, he, from the time that he went through really the end of the Euro Cup season and the playoffs there, um, to the draft process and the workouts, to summer league, you know, catch your breath and then come back here for a, you know, our preseason segment of, of OTAs. Um, it's that, that consistent work ethic, even to, through some times that probably require, you know, a level of endurance that, that not all of us, you know, have to face during that, that process as, as going into your rookie season. Coach, last season, size and depth kind of problems came up a little, maybe not problems, but just the lack of it came up last season a lot. And they kind of bolstered it a little bit more with Dyson and Zach and um, Larry Nance Jr. Just how much versatility does that add to your ability to create different types of rotations and lineups and like? Yeah. Well, without being too dramatic, those things did did impact last year. You know, really, when we had injuries from the time that Jalen went down um, in December, and then you know we wouldn't call Trey one of our bigger players, um, but certainly that required someone like you know V. Kobe took his lumps from an injury standpoint, which you know, I won't say slowed his development, but it, but it changed his path a little bit. He's someone that's, he's been in the gym, you know, every time you turn around. Um, I could say the same thing about Garrison, who's you know, 6'5", small forward. You know, he may say he's 6'6", I'm not sure, but you know, what he does is shoot the ball. So, you know, a number of guys that, that, that we've added, um, as you mentioned, you know, Larry, who's been a multiple position player, um, but a center more recently, and, you know, a center that's not a seven foot center, um, but, a, but a player that is capable of playing above the rim and has size. You know, Zach obviously at 6'9", 6'10", um, size, Dyson 6'7", size. Uh, so I, I think it's important for us to be bigger um, throughout those positions. It does you know, that versatility, that size creates versatility because those guys aren't single position players. Uh, and that allows them to play in combination. And those combinations are what create depth. You know, that, that versatility that, that guys bring when they have you know, size and length. Um, I'd like to see those players and, and others really complement each other. And that's something that when you have those opportunities is, is a really good thing and a productive thing. Uh, good morning, Coach. Um, last year, you shared some uh, amazing insight on uh, your process of adapting your offensive system toward the personnel on the roster. So, with significant roster changes this offseason, um, what what specific offensive concepts might need to adapt to maximize the abilities of those new players while also still carrying forward the things that went well? Yeah, I think you know adaptation offensively is both. You know, individual players and, and putting them or trying to put them in positions where they can be most successful. And it's also a collective process. Um, you mentioned a few principles. I, I think, you know, there's an opportunity for us to play more with the pass. Um, I think that has an impact on pace. You know, the quickest way to get the ball across half court is to pass it across half court. Um, that's not to say pushing on the dribble um, isn't another way to do that. Um, but we've seen you know, in a short period of time, you know, not just willing passers, but good passers. And those things, you know, have a way of connecting your team. And, you know, it's not just versatility offensively, um, but it, it allows you to play in a way um, that, that is a little bit different, um, different than we played last year. And I, th I think that can be a real strength of this team. Hey, coach, what ways are you looking to, for Jalen Johnson to improve this season? Well, you know, Jalen's improvement, you know, last year was something that I think all of us were really excited about. Um, you know, when he hurt his wrist in December, you, you would have thought that that slowed that down. Um, and I thought he came back um, with the same level of focus. His versatility is something 
that's really unique. And the times where he played his best basketball last year, he really let the game come to him. And I, I think when you do have the ability to pass and shoot and handle, um, it gives you that chance to do that, to be able to impact the game in a variety of ways throughout the course of the game. The one thing that, that we've continued to impress upon him and that, that I think he's really embraced is his ability to impact the game defensively as well. Um, whether that means you know, defensive rebounding, you know, you get back to his versatility. When he gets a defensive rebound, he's a guy that's capable of pushing it in transition and making plays for other people. So with Jalen, it's less about any one thing. Um, Albeit, I, I think his focus defensively is an area where he can really you know, impact winning. But it's really a, a function of the fact that he can impact the game so many ways. And him allowing himself the opportunity to do that, you know, and not defining himself in any one way. Uh, when you you, you were, uh, mentioned Dyson Daniels a couple times here. Uh, other than... It, when, he, when he's on the court, say with Trey or Jalen, or just in the rotation in general, how does having another playmaker like that alongside those two guys affect the ball movement or just how the offense can flow? Yeah, you know, one of the earlier questions, you know, I, I, passing was part of my, my answer. And I think Dyson is someone that, you know, particularly for his size, um, a player that can guard multiple positions, his ability to make plays, whether it be off the dribble or may, even making a simple pass, his ability to cut, um, you know, which is, I think, a, an art form that's a little bit lost in today's NBA. Cutting is something that can go with shooting. You know, they're both, both equally effective, and you can shoot the ball and cut, um, but not just cutting the score. You know, I think those are situations where he has the ability to catch the ball and move um, and make a play for someone else because he, he really does have a good feel for the game. Coach, uh, very international roster this year. Up here. Up here. Yeah. yeah, very international roster this year. You've got uh, Bogdan, of course, Serbia, Australia, uh, Czech Republic. You've coached international players in the past, of course, in Utah. How do you find that dynamic when you've got so many players from so many different backgrounds in the locker room to try to communicate effectively so that everyone understands the message and, and it's clear from you? This is, this is almost a political question. <laughs> because as far as I can tell, these guys all have one thing in common, is that they love basketball. And you know, people communicate in a lot of different ways. Um, and I, I think, you know, in my experience, where you're from, whether you're from Florida or Washington State, or Australia or France, you know, that, that commonality um, that those guys share is is really uh, more impactful than various cultures and languages. Um, certainly, you know, I won't speak to Zach in French and Dyson with an accent and Bogey in Serbian, um, but it, it's it's really a, a commentary about our game, and I think it's a it, it's it's not just interesting, but it's to be celebrated in this game. That, you do have players from so many different countries. It's reflective of the level of basketball being played, you know, throughout the world. And, you know, it's enriching as well. You know, that's, we talk a lot about, you know, sport enriching our lives and building bridges and learning from each other. And sometimes those things get lost in, in your wins and loss, your record, and both can be true. And so it's, uh, I, I think it's, a great thing, and it's reflective of a lot of really positive things um, that we can all appreciate throughout our culture in this game.